St. Martin's is a beautiful little village right on the Bay of Fundy. We have a lot of history in shipbuilding. We did uh, lumber down from the Salmon River on the barges and then on the boats. Tourism over the last few years has really made a major jump and a major change in the village and we welcome all of it. We love to see people come and enjoy what we have here. What is special is that we are one of two places in the world where you can take a picture of two covered bridges at the same time. The bridges are iconic to the area because it really connected the folks who lived up on what we called Orange Hill and the other side down by the caves, which we called Max Hill. You know, with the two bridges there, we were all really just one family. We went to the schools together, we went to events together, and it really just connected that, that whole area and made us really one. People have a real uh, love for covered bridges and they have so many stories for, for people. They hold so many stories. I was 13 when I come to St. Martin's. I couldn't believe the water. We come through St. Martin's and we had to go through the covered bridge. We couldn't imagine we were, we're going to go through that, <laughs> you know. And I know we got out of the car. There wasn't many much traffic, but we get out of the car and we're dancing around. We were having a great time. Unfortunately, the Vaughn Creek Bridge was starting to show its age in the last few years. The bridge was actually found to be unsafe for vehicular traffic, so we had to close it down. We responded very quickly because this is a very important transportation corridor. We installed a temporary bridge beside the existing bridge, which would allow us some time to come up with a plan for how to replace the covered bridge that was located there. When the decision was made that uh, the existing structure needed to be replaced, we went through a stakeholder engagement process and talking to the municipalities and other departments, and that led us in the direction of replacing it with another covered bridge. The other thing that we were concerned about was that there was potentially going to be increased traffic because of the opening of the Fundy Connector. So with that more traffic and providing a, a route for goods and services, we needed to have more capacity, as well as a taller structure for some of the taller tour buses and other deliveries um, that we would have through this area as well. We started that project, of course, with field work to identify uh, all of the environmental constraints as part of the project. So some of the things that we identified as part of that work were wetlands, there were high potential archaeological sites in the area. And then of course the Irish River itself is also something that, um, not necessarily a constraint, but something that we work towards protecting as part of our work. As far as removing the existing bridge, we um, typically require them to take the bridge down in a way that avoids uh, anything going into the watercourse and causing an impact that way. And that would be all part of our watercourse and wetland alteration permit or our Fisheries Act letter of advice that would have been issued for this project. The project was determined to not require a Fisheries Act authorization because we were able to, again, avoid and minimize our impacts in the watercourse itself. We also uh, registered the project on Transport Canada's website under the Canadian Navigable Waters Act. And then of course, Section 82 uh, determination under the Federal Impact Assessment Act. So those were the four different environmental processes that we undertook as part of the project. The decision was made to put this out to a design build. A design build allows a contractor as well as a consultant to do the, the fine details of the design as well as um, perform the construction of, of the bridge. To take a New Brunswick icon and modernize it for current code requirements, we had to combine aspects of the bridge code and the building code. This covered bridge, of course, uh, is the first covered bridge that New Brunswick has built since 1992. But it's also the second covered bridge that we built uh, since the early 50s. And of course, this is the first two-lane covered bridge that the province has in our inventory. Most covered bridges that we have in our inventory are restricted in use because of their design. 
This bridge uses glue laminated uh, timber, which provides a lot more engineering potential and gives us more capacity out of, out of the bridge. So we can get higher loads and the loads that are required for this transportation network. For some historical context, covered bridges were originally built that way to keep water off the main members. At the time, they didn't have any preservative treatments for the wood, and a lot of the early timber truss bridges that they built lasted maybe 15, 20 years. So they started building enclosures around them, and uh, some of them are still around 100 years later. For this bridge construction, the materials were cut, drilled, adapted, fully assembled, then taken apart and sent for preservative treatment. The reason to do this is so that limited amount of cuts need to be done on site after the preservative material is put onto the bridge, keeping the bridge fully preserved and lasting as long as possible. All the steel assemblies were sent for galvanizing. All the timber assemblies were sent for pressure treatment, at which point they were shipped to site and assembled. So you can see all the rafters are built down here, all pre-assembled already. They'll put the purlins on, which are the basic cross members, and then, then they'll put the cedar shingles on top, and then basically take that whole piece down and drop it in place. Most of the actual main truss was built right on site at the approaches. It was assembled there, flipped upright, and lifted with a pair of cranes with a couple temporary bents in the river to help stabilize it during the assembly process. The challenge at this site with the alignment and footprint and kind of weaving that needle in between all of the environmental constraints, essentially building a bridge beside the existing one. What we were able to do is provide the design builder with a box, kind of a, an area that we uh, asked them to keep their footprint within that box and they were able to do, to do that. They worked really hard to keep their footprints minimized so that we uh, lessened our impacts on the environment at this project. You can see where the original bridge, the bottom of the original, the, um, the modular bridge that's yeah. down here. Yeah. The other bridge was almost exactly at the same height. So I guess when we had the floods in, was it 2018? When the floods happened, water was actually at high tide going across the original bridge. So it's a good foot and a half higher, I think, than the original. We've been studying climate change and sea level rise for a number of years. For this design, we had some information in the contract for the bottom elevation of the structure, so it would not be affected by storm surges. We also looked at the out reaches of the bridge's life um, to be able to jack the bridge up when it needs to be, when, when those sea level or sea level rises happen or storm surges happen that the bridge needs to be lifted. Yeah, so the, the outside will all be done with six inch wide, one inch hemlock, just surfaced. So similar to what was on the original bridge. And then it'll, it, it'll look like lumber when you first see it and then it'll gray, fade over time. I became involved with the Vaughan Creek Bridge kind of in two roles as a structural engineer. Also, I took a view at it from the accessibility lens to make sure that um, any features that we built into the bridge would be um, accessible to people with a mobility disability. So it was really the, the sidewalk leading up to the bridge, the sidewalk on the bridge, and the windows. I'm really impressed with the final product and really proud and happy that it's accessible for everybody. And I just want to say, wow, have you guys looked at that bridge? Like, wow, it's amazing. The completion of the Vaughan Creek Covered Bridge is an amazing accomplishment. It's part of creating an experience for people who visit our beautiful province and the Fundy Trail. This is the first two-lane covered bridge ever built in New Brunswick. It's innovative, it meets today's needs, and preserves our heritage. It's built to the latest high standards, but built out of wood. It's very important for the small businesses in the area. It is a route that many people travel. 
There are a lot of people who have already taken the route, but recently with the opening of our park, there's going to be more people that will come. It's, it was pretty exciting. It's rare to see the general public so excited for a bridge. There was a, there was a lot of enthusiasm for it. These projects like this, so that we can sh show the world, as well as our province, what we can do are, are very interested to me and other people in our design bridge. The fact that the bridge was built, it is a covered bridge, it is a wooden bridge, and we were able to identify and um, avoid and minimize all of those environmental constraints. It's definitely something to be proud of. This is a project the DTI should be very proud of. They went above and beyond. They thought outside the box. They engaged with the local stakeholders. They were able to adapt some of the design work on this to, you know, really fit what the community really needed. It was a win for everyone.